Okay, the next thing we have to talk about is section 11, complex fractions. So complex fractions can be kind of intimidating when you first see them, but they're really not that bad. There's a couple different ways you can eliminate the complex fraction. So in number one, um, the technique I'm going to show you first is that you can always multiply by the least common de denominator of the entire fraction. So when you look at the bottom, uh, the least common denominator of the denominator was 2. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. Now this is like multiplying a fraction by 2 over 2, which is just 1, so it's not changing our fraction at all. So when I do this, I get 2x divided by 2x minus 1. And that's your answer. That's as simplified as it can possibly be. Okay, now our next one, let's do that same technique. So let's multiply by the least common denominator, which is just x over x. So when I do that, I get x times 1 over x is 1 plus 4x divided by 1 minus 2x. Again, that's as simplified as it can go. So all you're doing is you're eliminating the fraction within the fraction. Okay. Now some of these other ones are a little bit more difficult. Number four, you would multiply by x times y, x times y. Uh, number nine, I would multiply, or number five, I'd multiply by nine x and nine x. Okay. Number six looks pretty tricky, so let's go ahead and try number six. So number six, I have x squared minus y squared over xy over x plus y over y. So I'm going to multiply on the top and the bottom by x times y. So when I do that, my x and y cancel, so I'm left with x squared minus y squared over, now on the bottom, just the y cancels. So I have x times x plus y. And I'm going to leave that in the factored form because as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that x squared uh, minus y squared can be factored into x plus y times x minus y. And on the bottom, I have x times x plus y. My final step is the x plus y's cancel, so I get x minus y all over x, and that's your answer. Now since it's just a monomial on the bottom, if you have x minus y over, over x, I accept that, but I would also accept 1 minus y over x. That's bringing the x into both pieces. But be careful, you need for there only to be one term on the bottom in order to do that. Okay, so let's get to some harder ones. So now when I see number 8, this one looks really hard. So you can think of the least common denominator of everything, or you can try to simplify the top, simplify the bottom, and then go from there. Um, let's go ahead and try to combine our fractions on the top. So if I was combining my fractions on the top, my first part would need x over x, and my second part would need, need 1 minus x over 1 minus x. So when you do that, you'd have x squared times x, or over x times 1 minus x, plus, this would end up being 1 minus x squared, all over x times 1 minus x. Okay, let's do the same thing on the bottom. Now the bottom would need 1 plus x over 1 plus x, and you need x over x. So the bottom would end up being, I'll do that in blue, um, 1 minus x squared over x times 1 plus x, and notice I'm leaving it in its factored form, that usually helps out a little bit. Okay. Con continue combining. Since you have common denominators here, you can combine into one big fraction. So I'd have x squared plus 1 minus x squared on top. So in other words, 1 over x times 1 minus x. On the bottom, I have 1 minus x squared plus x squared, so 1 over x times 1 plus x. Now I have a fraction divided by a fraction, so let's look at it. I always call it the old school division sign, but I've learned it's called an obelisk. Thank you, William. So I'm going to divide by 1 over x times 1 plus x, which we know is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Oh, where's that wrong spot? So when you do this, the x's cancel, so your final answer is 1 plus x 
all over 196. All right, and then number seven, uh, just remember on number seven that if I have x to the negative three, that's one over x cubed, right? So start that one out like this. And then multiply by the GCF or the LCD, least common denominator of x cubed. Okay, and then number nine, if you notice that x minus five times x plus two, that actually multiplies to be x squared minus three x minus ten. That will make your life a lot easier. So your whole common denominator is x squared minus three x minus ten. Okay, let's go on to the next page. Okay, composition of functions. I think most of you are pretty good at these, so this will be really quick. So the key to this is start from the inside. So if I have g of 2, well, g of 2 is plugging in 2 into my g function. So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So it's really f of 3. So f of 3 is 3 squared, which is 9. Easy enough. All right, some of these get a little bit harder. So start from the inside on number 5. So if I'm finding h of 1 half, h of 1 half, I look at my h function. So 2 to the 1 half power. Hmm. That's a hard one. 2 to the 1 half power. I'm going to write a square, the square root of 2. So I have f of the square root of 2. So f of the square root of 2 is square root of 2 squared, so 2. And g of 2 is 2 times 2 minus 1, which we just found was 3. Okay, number six says f of g of x. So this time I just have x. I don't have a number. So still start from the inside. It's f of, well, g of x was 2x minus 1. So basically I'm plugging 2x minus 1 in for x in my f function. So instead of having x squared, I'm going to have 2x minus 1 squared. And you can leave it like that, or you could FOIL it out. You get 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 if you FOILed it. Okay, same thing for the others. So if I have f of h of x, so h of x was 2 to the x, okay, and then f was, go back, x squared, so I'm going to have 2 to the x squared, which we write as 2 to the 2x, or think of it this way. If I had 2 to the 2, with an x on the outside. Isn't that the same as 2 to the 2x? There's a 2 there. They're the exact same thing, right? So it's 4 to the x. Okay. Solving rational equations. So this is basically what we were doing uh, before. We're just going to multiply through by our least common denominator. So on the first one, I'm going to multiply through by my least common denominator of each of those, which would be, I would need 6x. So I'm going to multiply everything by 6x. And I'm going to write out the step in between, although you don't really need to write this all the time. You'll get used to it. So 6 and 3 reduce to 2. 6 and 6 cancel. x and x cancel. So my new equation is 2x times 2, so 4x x times 5 with a negative, negative 5x equals 6. So negative x equals 6, so x equals negative 6. Now on these rational equations, it's always important to go back and check to make sure x didn't make it undefined. So the only thing x couldn't be originally was 0. That's the only thing that would give my denominator, um, that would make my denominator equal to 0. So that's your answer. Okay, same things for these other ones, number 5. My least common denominator is I would need x, and I need the x minus 5. So let's kind of do it in our head. As I multiply into the first one, the x's are going to cancel. So I'm going to be left with 60 times x minus 5. When I multiply x times x minus 5 into the second one, x minus 5's cancel. So I have negative 60 times x. And when I multiply into the third one, the x's cancel. So I get equals 2 times x minus 5. And we just solve that. 60x minus 300 minus 60x equals 2x minus 10. 60x's go away. So I get negative 300 plus 10, so negative 290 equals 2x. So x equals negative 145. Okay, you can go back and check in your original. 
um, negative 145 didn't make it undefined, right? Only 5 and 0 would have. So that's your answer. All right, on number 6, you need both the x plus 5 and x minus 5 to be your common denominator um, because that is x squared minus 25. So don't go too big. So know that x plus 5 and x minus 5 that's the same as this denominator. So don't multiply by x squared minus 25 as well. Right. Okay, same things for the others. Um, to make your life a little bit easier on number 7, I would probably rewrite my equation as x over x minus 2 minus 2x over x squared minus 4. So all I did was um, multiply by negative 1 on the top and the bottom because I knew that um, x minus 2 and x plus 2 made the new denominator, x squared minus 4. Okay. And then number 8, I'd pull out a 2 and a 3. And then factor, so you see you have x minus 3 times x minus 3. So your LCD for number 8, you're going to need the 2 and the 3. And then you need x minus 3 times x minus 3. You need both of them. Because if you just used one, you wouldn't get rid of both things in the middle. Okay, so finish those ones out.